you know, when we talk about marginal, it means additional, okay? But what is return? So here, look, when you look at the definition over there, okay, it makes sense now. So the return is basically the output. So you could say marginal, re uh, marginal returns are marginal output. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you can say so, okay? So, you know, the definition clearly shows that uh, when you are talking about marginal return, it, it says, look, it is the additional output from adding an additional input into production, right? Because, you know, when you want to have more output, obviously, you need some more resources to help you produce more, right? Okay? So that is the case. If you want to have additional output, you need more input to help you. And at the end, you will find marginal returns additional output okay all right so that is uh, the case we have right here but we have to assume one thing once again okay when we are talking about law of diminishing uh, marginal returns we have to make some assumption and here this is the assumption that we always have to bear in mind if we don't make that assumption uh, nothing will make sense okay so we have to assume okay when we are trying to make more output Okay, we are only adding some variable inputs while the fixed inputs are being constant. Okay, because what now we are talking about a short period of time. Okay, the timing here is very important. Okay, we are talking about a short period of time. So if you don't know what uh, variable inputs and fixed inputs are here, uh, you know, you have some very simple ex explanation. So variable, uh, variable inputs, some FOPs, factors of production. Uh, that are more mobile, okay, yeah, more flexible, like labor. It can be easily recruited, okay. But when you're talking about like fixed inputs, that is something more bulky. That is something uh, more immobile, okay, like big machines, uh, robots, uh, factories, okay, all right, all right, yeah. So, you know, yeah, you can differentiate the both, right, okay. So, you know, when you are in a short period of time, the reason why you can only add up variable inputs is because if you are trying to add some more fixed inputs, you need more time. Okay? The perfect example is going to be factory. Okay? Yeah, you cannot just buy a factory if you, even if you want it. All right? It takes some time. It takes some time, you know, to look for a good factory. It takes some time to uh, 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 negotiate. It takes some time to sign the contract. It takes some time to renovate the factory. It takes some time to, you know, check up on everything before you can use that factory. Okay, all right? Yeah, and that's why in the short period of time, you cannot increase those fixed input in order to make more output. You can only recruit more variable inputs in order to increase additional output okay all right so that is the scenario we have right here okay and you have to make that assumption so we are assuming we are you know, living in a short period of time all right so yeah make sure you have that uh, example with you yeah i think that w that that factory example is very good to explain you know this uh, assumption here okay all right uh any questions so far yeah it is and anything yeah if, if you yeah if you have any questions just just ask it's okay all right yeah yeah so you know even though I w I'm just repeating the things that we, we have done uh, during induction but it's, it's good to know okay so now we know marginal returns yeah uh, only happens when we recruit more inputs okay because you know when we have more resources yeah, they can help us produce more uh, output, which is your marginal return. That's the case, right? And here, look. And because of that, because of that assumption here, okay, you will see uh, the additional output will decrease. Okay, the ad yeah, you will find additional output, but the amount of additional output will decrease when you know extra inputs are needed for more output okay yeah and 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 we all know uh why that is the case um and look 
I don't know if you still remember the example that we did uh, during induction. Yeah, talk about a factory. Okay. Yeah. So imagine you only have one machine. Okay. And now you have one labor to work on that machine. Okay. All right. Yeah. So if you yeah if you want to uh, have more output, yeah you you cannot recruit one more machine right now because you know we are talking about uh, a short period of time. So if you want to if you still want to have more output, yeah then you may have to recruit one more labor, okay to help uh, uh to help you know work on other uh, aspects yeah in in the production, okay. Um, so you know when you have now two labor and one machine so maybe somehow the production could be more productive yeah because someone is helping uh, the first guy to uh, uh, produce the product so you know that looks good but if you c you know if you still want to increase more output then the only way to increase the output that is by recruiting more and more labor if that's the case Look, eventually, you know what's going to happen in the factory, okay? Uh, there's one example that I, I just had it in my mind. Uh, I don't know if you still remember, like, in year nine, yeah, in year nine, uh, there was a class activity, uh, where you had to um, use the newspaper. Yeah, you, you remember that? Yeah, using. Yeah, yeah, the newspaper that one to make uh, a circle, and then you guys just <laughs> got in <laughs> to the paper and it had had like um, a fifteen meter walk or something. Yeah, I remember that one, you guys. Yeah, when uh, Miss Kwong was still the head of year. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that was the year. Yeah, you guys remember that, right? Yeah, and and I bet if you you know just try to remember how you made that newspaper circle because it, w it was a teamwork yeah and you had like 20 students in your class and for my class like 9a yeah at that time I could totally see law of diminishing marginal returns yeah when they're trying to make you know the you know the circle bigger I yeah you can you can assume that as uh, more output look you can you know recruit more and more students from from 9a to make that circle but you know wh if you keep doing that so many of the students they just stood they just stood at the side and looking at the newspapers that's all yeah and the only only ones who were working on uh, the circle it was just those like five or six like, and the rest they were just standing yeah and yeah doing nothing okay so that is the case a and you can you can actually explain it using law of diminishing uh, marginal returns okay yeah when when you don't have many tools with you when you only have like two scissors yeah uh, uh a stack of newspapers it's, yeah and 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 maybe just one uh duct tape this is what you will get okay yeah if you want to make you know make it bigger if you want to make it bigger yeah you recruit more students to help look it's not going to help eventually and so many of them yeah they are, they're not doing anything not because they don't want to do anything it's just because they cannot do anything yeah right you know you have a capacity and you have use it up all right so that's that's one example to uh, show law of diminishing uh, uh, marginal returns and here look I'm just gonna show you uh, one example that you can see in the restaurant yeah so uh, you can take a look of this clip here Right, so you know, spend some time and take a look at this clip. The law of diminishing returns, also referred to as the law of diminishing marginal returns, or the principle of diminishing marginal productivity, simply states that increases in one factor of production generate lower and lower additional returns, assuming that nothing changes when it comes to the other factors of production. Let's imagine Bill starts a small restaurant and only has one waiter. The food is tasty, the restaurant looks nice, but with only one waiter, customers are not happy with the long wait times and quite a few don't return. 
As a result, Bill's monthly profit is an unsatisfactory $4,000 and he decides to take action by hiring another waiter. Yes, he has to pay another person, but now his restaurant is actually efficient and profits go up because his revenue increase more than covers the salary of the waiter, with his monthly profit jumping to $6,000. Bill then decides to hire another waiter and again, it works because his profit goes up, just not as dramatically as before. Still, it goes from $6,000 to $6,500. Bill likes the trend, so he hires yet another waiter, but this time, his profit actually goes down by $1,000, now sitting at $5,500. As can be seen, adding the fourth waiter was just not worth it because as of a certain point, too many waiters just end up being in the way of one another. That's pretty much it. To rebalance the equation, Bill would have to either let one of the waiters go or implement changes when it comes to other factors of production by, for example, getting a larger space. Yeah, so uh, that restaurant example is just one another scenario that you can use. Yeah, besides using factory or using uh, the class example, right? So it's all about capacity, okay? And which shows the importance of this assumption here, okay? In the short period of time, you cannot increase the fixed inputs, all right? And that's why if you keep increasing the variable inputs, very soon, your marginal returns will go down. Yeah, we go down, right? Because you know you're becoming more inefficient. You're becoming more inefficient. Yeah, even when you talk about like factories or, or the, the restaurant example, it's the same. It's the same. All right. Yeah, and that's how we get this uh, law of diminishing uh, marginal returns. Okay, the idea. All right. Yeah, and you know this idea is actually connecting to uh, another um, idea, and which is. Uh, increasing marginal cost okay all right so uh you know yeah because of the law of diminishing marginal returns uh well here i think i'm just going to draw you something um just give me a second let me just open up uh wait okay Yeah, it's going to open up a jam bot for myself. Okay, so now we know like how law of diminishing uh, marginal returns work. Okay, so now we need to know why when we have law of diminishing uh, marginal returns, there will be an increasing marginal cost. Okay, all right. So let's say um, I have a shop you know, uh, uh, making guitars, okay, yeah, I have a shop making guitars, um, so here, just give me a second, right. okay, uh, wait, oh, I cannot do that, no, uh, nope, I thought I can just copy and paste, oh, I can, I can do that, oh, all right, all right, yeah, 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 I'm trying to make some, you know, images here. All right, yeah. So, you know, I have a shop here making a uh, guitar. And uh, let's make some assumption here. Uh, you know, the assumption here is, uh, you know, if there is only one person making the guitar. Okay, I'm just going to draw that. I'm sorry about the drawing. Yeah, so if there's only one labor. Okay, here. Okay, all right, yeah. So yeah, so this is the first labor. Uh, yeah, here, and the output that he has is is one. Okay, so that that guy can make one guitar. Okay, yeah, if we have one labor, yeah, you know, you can make one guitar. But the thing is, hey, in this shop, you only have um one toolbox okay you only have one toolbox um i'm just going to uh yeah put another thing here okay all right so there's only one toolbox so only one toolbox and uh yeah and only you know yeah a person can fully use this toolbox so you know you can imagine if i hire the second labor the second labor can only help the first labor 
uh, you know, a little bit of it in the system. So maybe the output will increase, but not increase uh, as much as, um, uh, you know, what we have from the first labor. So let's say, you know, if, if I'm in, uh, recruiting uh, the second labor, because of the limitation I have inside my shop, you know, I only have one uh, uh, toolbox. Uh, so let's say I can only make one point, you know, together. So here I would say uh, total output, okay, total output, or you can say total returns, yeah? So the total output, if I'm having two labor, is going to be 1.5 guitar, okay, all right? So if I have to make two guitars, okay, what should I do? If I want to make two guitars, so now what should I do? Yeah, I just need uh, yeah, I just need more labor. Uh, yeah, I just need more labor, right? Yeah. So uh, you know, yeah. So now, yeah, I guess I'm just going to recruit one more because you know, at, at a very short period of time, I cannot uh, increase this toolbox, the number of, of my toolbox, because they are, you know, the fixed input. Yeah, they are fixed input. Okay, so the only thing that I can recruit uh, mobily, which is the labor. So I guess now I'm just going to uh, recruit uh, the third one. Yeah. And maybe, yeah, and for the third one, look, he couldn't help much. Because now you only have like two la labor working in the shop with one two box and now if you have th the third labor look the total output will be increased but you know in, in an even slower rate so maybe now it's like uh, uh well we just i'm just gonna make up some number like 1.8 okay yeah so yeah, yeah so if that's the case then you know if we want to make two output yeah i guess we have to recruit one more labor okay yeah so let's say um uh that's the f oops that's the fourth yeah, that's the fourth labor. Okay, okay, all right. So you know, yeah, yeah. Let's say now, finally, you can um, make two output. Okay, because of the recruitment of um, a variable input. So they are the variable input, right? Yeah. So here I'm just going to variable input. Okay. Okay, so if, if I tell you the wage per worker, okay, the wage per worker is um, $10, it's $10, okay, all right, so if I have to produce two guitars instead of one, what is the extra cost? So what is the extra co uh, what is the extra cost when I have to um, produce two guitars? Yeah, thirty, right? Yeah, because now look because of so here you can see law of diminishing marginal return right here. Yeah, well I'm not going to attempt yeah writing all that okay <laughs> because it's so difficult using the mouse <laughs> writing you know the words okay so because of that you will see in order to produce one more unit one additional unit your marginal cost is going to be way bigger than the previous uh, marginal cost which is uh, 10 all right okay so you, you see the connection between the both the law of diminishing uh, uh, marginal reach yeah i think i'm just gonna write that all right yeah diminish diminishing diminishing okay such a long term. Um, marginal, marginal, marginal returns. Okay, I'm sorry about the terrible drawings and writing here. Okay, because of the law of diminishing uh, marginal returns, we know this is the outcome uh, for our output. Okay, and if we have to produce additional uh, output, 
our marginal cost is going to be way bigger for you know the additional output that we want to make okay so you know that explains why we have law uh, law diminishing uh, uh, marginal returns and that explains why the marginal cost will go up when we want to produce more when we want to supply more okay any questions here okay does it make sense to you yeah yeah does it make sense to you yeah because you know you only want two box and yeah the only way that you can try to increase the output yeah you can just rec recruit more labor yeah try to help but at the end yeah you know when you recruit more laborers the labor they will become uh, more inefficient because they are all you know trying to get that toolbox you know the tools inside yeah and, and try to work and you know is inefficient all right so there you go so this is why um, you have increasing uh, marginal costs yeah, because of that all right yeah you know is the lack of productivity okay all right okay any um yeah i think i just asked that yeah so you know yeah yeah feel free to ask if you have any questions but here when you look at the slide it's just what i was trying to say okay when i was drawing uh, all that okay all right so you can use your own word to explain it okay all right you can use your own word to explain it as long as you are you know uh, able to explain the way that I did uh, for the guitar shop that's that's cool okay so you know so you know because of that look when we talk about supply curve it actually represents the MC curve uh, the marginal cost curve okay because you see here yeah the more quantity that we make the higher the marginal cost okay all right just like here the more quantity of guitars we're trying to make the higher the marginal cost from the first guitar 10 to the second guitar right you see here yeah you have 36 uh, extra for the thir uh, for the for the second guitar you see here that's why you know this diagram here can show the supply curve right can represent the marginal cost as well okay all right so if you have to combine law of supply and uh, here about the increasing marginal cost the concept together how do you uh, uh, how do you you know connect the both how do you connect the both um, theories so from law of supply yeah you know uh, the higher the price we are going to supply more of the quantity of that good and then for marginal cost right yeah the more quantity that we make the higher the cost so how do you combine the both okay since marginal costs are increasing as quantity increases producers have to raise price to comp uh, to compensate for increased cost yeah macro that's that's perfect yeah that's perfectly done okay so yeah that there you go all right so if you want to make connection between the both uh, explanation this is how you can do it okay because people the suppliers they know the more output that they make in a short period of time the higher the marginal cost so you know how do we sustain if that is the case then we just have to sell our goods at a higher price when more people when, when, when we want to uh, supply more when we want, want to supply more okay because we know when we when we make more the marginal cost will only get higher so we need to raise the price when we want to supply more okay all right so that's the connection uh you found in here okay uh any questions so far okay all right yeah because you know uh very soon we will have to combine uh, the both together and we, we, we see something uh, uh, you know a little more complicated yeah but we'll do it in the SL class okay so make sure you uh, you know yeah understand this clearly before we get to the next lesson because I, I think I'm going to do it in the next lesson yeah yeah all right okay
so yeah so that's all right so that's all okay if you have no questions then, then that's all right so I'm just gonna give you some exercise and then we'll you know we'll call it a day all right yeah so yeah so there you go um, for law of demand and supply yeah these are the explanations that we can use okay